Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich here. We actually have rain on the way and not just for one day. We could see a good soaking rain on Tuesday and another round on Wednesday. A little bad news with this setup though. A lot of wind and the potential for severe weather. So let's get right to the details. As you can kind of see this looping behind me. It's been a while. We have not seen a storm like this all fall long. You see the big low pressure system. It's a potent storm system. These are the type of storm systems you typically see in the month of November. We just haven't seen it lately because all the storms have been away from us and we haven't been able to tap into some moisture. We've got all the ingredients, fuel for the storms coming off the Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico. That's low level, warm, humid air. We've got a strong low pressure system. We've also got a little bit of a backdoor front here bringing in a wedge. So this combination is going to help produce some heavy, heavy rain into the Carolinas as this approaches from the west. But there is a severe weather element with this because of the po potential of these strong winds and that low level moisture we we're going to have what's called a high shear low cape event which means a lot of wind energy but not a lot of heat and humidity so this will be a setup where we could see severe storms even if the temperatures are in the low 60s um, because of the amount of wind energy so let's get right to that severe weather outlook so here's today's severe weather outlook you see the the low medium higher uh, threats down here across the southern part of the mississippi river valley that threat will shift to the east tomorrow and you can see most of the carolinas in a low risk outside of the mountains now what's interesting about this is we're going to have a wedge which is cool dry air at the surface warm humid air riding up and over it now how much that wedge erodes is going to be the key to how much severe weather threat we have tomorrow but the nice thing about having the wedge in place even though it complicates things it helps produce more rainfall which is what we need so the risk is low, but it could go up or down based on how things unfold. So this is not set in stone. As we go into Wednesday, the risk goes away completely, but the risk for heavy rain is there as well, which is amazing because we just have not seen that much risk of heavy rain period at all. So I'll quickly show you the risk for flash flooding. The green outlined area is the low risk. That's today. Tomorrow, you could see for the first time, I mean, we were, we're in a horrible drought. We have a low end risk for flash flooding now it's because of the drought it probably would have been higher if it wasn't the drought going on and then day three you could see kind of the same area so yeah there's a risk we're going to see some very heavy rain with this setup let's get right to the future cast though to kind of show you the timing so we're actually already seeing some rain today some sprinkles because of this flow coming in that's a good sign but the main low is back here and it'll be moving in from the west so i'm going to widen this out a little bit and we'll go hour by hour into the afternoon so don't be surprised if some showers or clouds continue to develop today but i think the first real rain will start tonight uh, we'll probably overnight tonight see some scattered showers develop and you could see that kind of that wedge set up because of that cool air trapped at the surface and the warm humid air trying to hit it it's like a ramp it lifts the air and creates clouds and showers so this is good news this is actually the kind of rain you want nice steady rain but then the heavier stuff comes in as the front approaches the thing i'll be watching tomorrow is where is this warm front? This is likely going to be a pocket of cold air trapped against the mountains, but there'll be a boundary here, a warm front. This will be trying to move north to erode or push that cold air to the north out of here. <clears throat> Wherever that happens, that's going to be where our risk for severe weather is. So during the day tomorrow, pretty wet day, just plan on it on and off some heavy downpours. Again, we're talking inches of rain this go around, not tenths of an inch, but it's all going to be this front. When this front approaches mid afternoon, what is the air mass like ahead of it? You see that line, it's actually a line of showers and thunderstorms um, moving in from the west, probably enters the mountains mid-afternoon and moves into the Piedmont through the evening hours. So mid-afternoon to evening we're looking at here, could even be later, but the timing of the front could fluctuate a little bit. So, you know, if you're traveling tomorrow, just a heads up, the weather is gonna be a huge issue. Just rain, thunderstorms, and, and obviously the wind is gonna affect air travel tremendously. So. Um, just be wary. It's going to be a lot of airport delays tomorrow. There will be airport delays tomorrow regardless and Wednesday because of the just the volume of traffic. But you throw a big storm system in there like this and it causes some significant issues. We go into Wednesday morning, a second surge of moisture comes in and keeps the rain going into Wednesday. So this is Wednesday and that's why we're going to have to raise the rain chances even for Wednesday because I think this secondary low, you see it there kind of moving in from the west helps enhance the rain. Now this will not be severe, but it'll be another surge of moisture, which will help out. So let's loop this. You'll see this system kind of unfold. Rain comes in tonight, severe storms tomorrow, then that second surge comes in on Wednesday. So two days of significant rainfall across the region. Let's get into some of the ingredients though for the severe weather. All right, this is a parameter that we use quite often. It's called the significant tornado parameter. I like it because it shows a lot of different variables into one product, but you see the STP values, that's short for significant tornado parameter. You see some of those ingredients coming up here tomorrow evening, five, six o'clock with the front. So right there, you see, it's not a ton. I mean, that's not off the charts. That's 
not crazy STP values. If I back this up a little bit, a little higher in South Carolina, close to one, but up in the Charlotte area, maybe at 0.5. But again, that's pretty common in these like low, you know, low Cape high shear events. Um, there's way more wind energy than there is fuel for these storms. And it only takes a little bit of fuel. You know, it's kind of like if you have a fire where you have a, you know, you don't have the ignition, but you have a ton of fuel. Um, in this case, we have a whole bunch of wind, wind energy and not the ignition to kind of get it going. So we kind of have all this fuel with nothing to get it going unless the, the weather gets a little warmer tomorrow and that warm front kicks north, then it taps into that. So you kind of get the idea there. There's a little bit there. It's not crazy off the charts. Let's look at the uh, updraft helicity, which just shows you the storm tracks that are, are going to be rotating tomorrow. And I'll, I'll go all the way through the event. You can see if you look in that area, there are several uh, tracks across the area. They're not really strong tracks. They're pretty low. But in this area, there is is several, or are several, I should say, uh, rotating storms. And again, remember, rotating storms don't always necessarily mean tornadoes. It just means they have the potential to be severe. So that 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 is going to be with us tomorrow. So there is that low end severe weather risk tomorrow with these storms. And we talked about the beneficial part of this is the rainfall. You could see the first batch of rain coming in tonight. You know, a couple inches maybe in the mountains. Then we go through this three, four, five days out. We could end up with you know over a six day period one to three inches of rainfall in the western carolinas which won't end the drought but this will put a significant debt in it maybe by a third and it's in areas where we desperately needed the the headwaters of all of our rivers and streams and the mountains and foothills that's where we could see the highest amount so good news in this situation that we're getting rain bad news it's going to happen on big travel days tuesday and wednesday and it could be severe so we've got a lot to watch just hear me out if you are traveling make sure you call ahead and plan for delays because this weather is going to cause some issues, especially at the airports.